Emperor Gao Zhu Tang, born Li Yuan, courtesy name Xu, was the founder of the Tang Dynasty of China and the first emperor of this dynasty from 618 to 626. Under the Suai dynasty, Li Yuan was the governor in the area of modern-day Shanxi, and was based in Taiyuan. In 615, Li Yuan was assigned to garrison Longxi. He gained much experience by dealing with the Gokturks of the north and was able to pacify them. Li Yuan was also able to gather support from these successes and, with the disintegration of the Suai dynasty in July 617, Li Yuan, urged on by his second son Li Shimin, rose in rebellion. Using the title of Great Chancellor, Li Yuan installed a puppet child emperor, Emperor Gong but eventually removed him altogether and established the Tang Dynasty in 618 as emperor. His son and successor Li Shimin honored him as Gao Zhu after his death. Emperor Gao Zhu's reign was concentrated on uniting the empire under the Tang. Aided by Li Shimin, whom he created the Prince of Qin, he defeated all the other contenders, including Li Jiyuai, Dao Jada, Wang Shichong, Zhu Ren Gao and Lu Wazhao. By 628, the Tang Dynasty had succeeded in uniting all of China. On the home front, he recognized the early successes forged by Emperor Wen of Sui and strove to emulate most of Emperor Wen's policies including the equal distribution of land amongst his people, and he also lowered taxes. He abandoned the harsh system of law established by Emperor Yang of Sui as well as reforming the judicial system. These acts of reform paved the way for the reign of Emperor Taizong, which ultimately pushed Hang to the height of its power. In 626, Li Shimin, in a dispute with his brothers Li Ji and Sheng, the crown prince, and Li Yuanji, the prince of Qi, ambushed Li Ji and Cheng and Li Yuanji at Shandwu Gate, killing them. Fearful of what Li Shimin might do next, Emperor Gaoj passed the throne to him and became Tai Shang Huang. He died in 635. Background and early career Li Yuan's seventh-generation ancestor was Li Gao, the founder of the Sixteen Kingdoms state Western Liang. After Western Liang's destruction, Li Jiao's grandson Li Chong'e served as a Northern Wei official, but for several generations after that, Li Yuan's ancestors had only minor military titles. Li Yuan's grandfather Li Hu served as a major general under Western Vice Paramount General Yu Tai, and was created the Duke of Longxi and given the Jiabe surname Dei. Li Hu died before Yu Tai's son Emperor Xiaoman of Northern Zhou founded Northern Zhou, but was posthumously created the Duke of Tang after Northern Zhou's founding. His son and Li Yuan's father Li Bing inherited the title of the Duke of Tang and married a daughter of the prominent general de Guxin. Li Bing died in 572, and Li Yuan inherited the title of Duke of Tang, a title he continued to hold after the throne was seized by Emperor Wen of Sui in 581, establishing Sui dynasty. As Emperor Wen's wife, Empress de Gu, was an aunt of his. At some point, he married Lady Dao, a daughter of Dao Yi the Duke of Shen Wu and Northern Zhou's Princess Zhang Yang as his wife and duchess. During Emperor Wen's reign, Li Yuan served three terms as provincial governor. Early in the reign of Emperor Wen's son Emperor Yang, Li Yuan served as commandery governor but was later recalled to serve as a junior minister within Emperor Yang's administration. When Emperor Yang carried out his second campaign against Gogyo in 613, Li Yuan was in charge of part of the logistics operation. When the general Yang Shangan rebelled near the eastern capital Luo Yang, Emperor Yang commissioned Li Yuan as a general and made him be in charge of the operations west of the Tong Pass. Although Yang Shangan's rebellion eventually did not involve that region, Li Yuan took the opportunity to recruit talented people to his staff. 
Later that year, when Emperor Yang summoned him to his presence, he declined, citing ill health, an excuse that Emperor Yang did not believe, as he questioned Li Yuan's niece, a consort Wang, will he die? In fear, Li Yuan took up drinking and receiving bribes to try to show Emperor Yang that he did not have great ambitions. In 615, Emperor Yang placed him in charge of the operations against agrarian rebels in the Hedong region, but recalled him in 616. Later that year, Emperor Yang put him in charge of the key city of Taiyuan. Rebellion against Emperor Yang of Suai. Emperor Yang grew dissatisfied with Li Yuan and Wang Rengong, the governor of Maya Commandry over their inability to stop incursions by the Eastern Turks and the growing strength of agrarian rebels, particularly the Turk-supported Liu Wazhao, the Dingyang Khan, who soon rose against Wang and killed him and captured Emperor Yang's secondary palace near Taiyuan. Li Yuan also became fearful due to prophecies circulating throughout the empire that the next emperor would be named Li, and because Emperor Yang had killed another official, Li Hun and his clan over his fears that Li Hun's nephew Li Min had imperial ambitions. Traditional accounts, compiled during the reign of Li Yuan's second son by the Duchess Dao, Li Shimen, emphasize the latter's initiative and major role in instigating his father's rebellion. According to these, Li Shimen was secretly planning rebellion against Suai rule with Pei Ji the major domo of Emperor Yang's secondary palace and with Lu Wenjing the magistrate of Jinyang County but at first did not reveal their plans to Li Yuan. At Li Shimen's urging, Pei Ji, who had also earlier, against regulations, allowed Li Yuan to have sexual relations with some of late Emperor Wen's imperial concubines persuaded Li Yuan that it was necessary for him to rebel. Modern researchers, however, have concluded that the initiative for the revolt came from Li Yuan himself. Li Yuan began to gather forces from the region, claiming that they were necessary to defend against the Turks, which drew suspicions from his deputies Wang Wei and Gao Junya. Li Yuan, afraid that Wang and Gao would act against him first, then used a Turkish attack as an excuse to falsely claim that Wang and Gao were working in concert with the Turkish Khagan, Shibi Khan, and had them executed. He sent secret messengers to Hedong to recall his sons Li Ji and Sheng, Li Yu and Ji and Li Ji Yang, whom he had left there to watch over his household, and the capital Chang'e to recall his daughter and her husband Chai Shao. Li Ji and Cheng and Li Yu and Ji, leaving Li Ji Yan at Hedong, soon met with Chai, and they arrived together at Tai Yuan. Li Yuan's daughter, believing it would be difficult for her to flee with Chai, chose to hide instead. Once Li Ji and Sheng, Li Yu and Ji, and Chai arrived at Tai Yuan, Li Yuan formally declared his rebellion but maintained the guise of a Suai loyalist and declared that his intention was simply to install on the throne Emperor Yang's grandson Yang Yu, the Prince of Dai, who was then at Chang'e, and honor Emperor Yang as Taishang Huang. Li Yuan first secured his northern flank by contacting Shibi Khan, offering tribute, and received men and horses in exchange. He put Li Ji and Cheng and Li Shimen in charge of his army and, leaving Li Yu and Ji in charge at Tai Yuan, advanced south. Meanwhile, the Suai officials at Hedong arrested Li Ji Yun and delivered him to Chang'e, where he was executed. His daughter Ping Yang sold her possessions to raise an army for him. She persuaded several other leaders to fight under her banner. They took several towns and her army swelled until she had 70,000 troops under her command. Meanwhile, Li Yuan wrote another rebel leader, Li Mi the Duke of Wei, who was near Luao Yang, trying to see if Li Mi would be willing to follow him. But Li Mi, believing in his own strength, had his secretary Zhu Junyan write Li Yuan for him in this way. Although I and you, my older brother, are of different branches, but we are both lists. 
I know that I do not have sufficient strength, but by the love of the men on this earth, I have been made the leader. I hope that you will support and help me. Let us capture Xing at Zhan Yang, and let us kill Xin of Shang at Muya. Would it not be a great accomplishment? Li Yuan was dismayed but, not wanting to make another enemy, wrote back humbly. Although I am ordinary and foolish, but I have had the opportunity to, by my ancestors largesse, receive the opportunity to be an imperial messenger when leaving the capital and a guard leader in the capital. If the administration falls and I am unable to help it, even the most understanding wise man will rebuke me. Therefore, I have organized a righteous army and sought peace with the barbarians to the north, i.e., Tuju, to try to calm the earth and to protect Suai. However, for the people under the heavens, there must be someone to rule over them, and other than you, who can be that person? I am too old, over fifty and that is not my intent, but I am happy to support you, my younger brother. I hope to be able to climb onto the scale of a dragon and hold onto the wing of a phoenix, and I hope that you, my younger brother, will soon, in accordance with the prophecy, pacify all who are on this earth. You are the leader among the Li, and I hope that you will be gracious and accept me, and to give me again the domain of Tang, that will be enough glory for me. I do not have the heart to hear such commands as killing Xin of Shang at Muya, nor do I dare to listen to the order of capturing Xing at Zhanyang. Also, the Fen and Jin region, i.e., modern Shanxi, requires pacification right now, and I am not yet able to arrange a time for the meeting at Meng Jin. Li Mi was pleased with Li Yuan's response, believing that Li Yuan was willing to support him, and from that point on, Li Mi and Li Yuan often exchanged messengers. Li Yuan's campaign against Chang Ah thus went without opposition from Li Mi. Meanwhile, however, when Li Yuan arrived near Hedong, his army was bogged down by the weather, and with food running out, there were rumors that Eastern Tuju and Lu Wazao would attack Tai Yuan. Li Yuan initially ordered retreat, but at the earnest opposition by Li Jiancheng and Li Shimin, continued to advance. After defeating Suai forces at Hari, he decided to leave a small contingent to watch over Hedong while advancing across the Yellow River into Guangzhou. Once he did, he headed for Chang'e himself. While sending Li Jiancheng to capture the territory around the Tong Pass region to prevent Suai forces at Luoyang from reinforcing Chang'e and Li, Shimon north of the Wei River to capture territory there. Meanwhile, his daughter had also risen in rebellion in support of him, and she was able to gather a sizable army and capture some cities. She joined forces with Li Shimon and her husband Chai Shao. Soon, Li Yuan reconsolidated his forces and put Chang'e under siege. In winter 617, he captured Chang'e and declared Yang Yu emperor. He had himself made regent and created the Prince of Tang. He sent his nephew Li Xiaogong south, and Li Xiaogong was able to persuade the Suai cities in modern southern Shaanxi, Sichuan, and Chongqing to submit, establishment of Tang and gradual unification. In spring 618, Emperor Yang was killed at Jiangdu in a coup led by the general Yu Win Waji. When the news reached Chang'e, Li Yuan had Emperor Gong yield the throne to him, becoming Emperor Gaozhi of the Tang dynasty. He restored much of the institutions of Sui's first ruler, Emperor Wen, reversing a number of changes that Emperor Yang made. He created Emperor Gong the Duke of Shi, Li Ji and Cheng, his oldest son, was named Crown Prince, while Li Shimin was made the Prince of Qin and Li Yuanji the Prince of Qi. Meanwhile, the Suai officials at Luoyang declared another grandson of Emperor Yang, Emperor Gong's brother Yang Tong, the Prince of Yu, as Emperor, and refused to recognize the regime change in Chang'e. Emperor Gaozhu's rule immediately faced a major challenge from Zhu Ju, an agrarian leader who had declared himself the Emperor of Qin. During the fall of 618, 
Zhu took advantage of Li Ximin's illness to defeat an army commanded by Li Ximin and Lu Wenjing at Qianshui Plain and approached Chang'e. In response, Gao Zhu tried to enter an alliance with Li Jiui, the prince of Liang, between whose domain and the Tang Xue's Qin state was located, writing Li Jiui and referring to him as cousin. Li Jiui briefly submitted to Gao Zhu. Meanwhile, before he could attack Chang'e, Zhu Du died of illness and was succeeded by his son Zhu Ren Gao, who was a capable commander but who had alienated his generals because of his cruelty. Li Shimon was soon able to attack Zhu Ren Gao at Gaoji and force Zhu Ren Gao to surrender. Meanwhile, Li Mi, having been defeated earlier in the year in a surprise attack by the Suai general Wang Shichong, fled to Tang territory and submitted to Gao Zhe. Li Mi's general Zhu Shijia, who controlled a major part of Li Mi's former territory, also submitted, and Emperor Gao Zhe, impressed with Xu's faithfulness to Li Mi, bestowed the imperial surname of Li on Zhu. Gao Zhe created Li Mi the Duke of Xing, but only made him the Minister of Feasts, a post that Li Mi viewed as below his stature. Around New Year 619, Li Mi requested Emperor Gao Zhu's permission to head east to persuade some of his former subordinates to submit to Tang. But once he left Chang'e planned to restore his independence. He was ambushed and killed by the Tang general Sheng Yanshi. In spring 619, Wang Shichong at Liaoyang had Yang Tong yield the throne to him, ending the Suai dynasty and establishing a new state of Zheng. Around the same time, Li Jiui, while stating that he wished to be a Tang subject, refused the Tang creation of Prince of Liang, instead declaring himself the Emperor of Tang. In summer 619, Li Gu's official in Xingua, formerly a Tang official, rebelled against Li Jiui and captured him, submitting to Tang. Gao Zhe executed Li Jiui and incorporated his domain into Tang. Also around the same time, the rebel leader Du Fu Vai, who controlled the modern southern Enwei, submitted to Tang, and Gao Zhe also bestowed the imperial surname of Li on him, creating him the Prince of Wu. Similarly, Luo Yi, who controlled the modern Beijing region, submitted, was bestowed the imperial surname of Li, and was created the Prince of Yan. Meanwhile, Tang was facing another serious threat. Lu Wazhao, now determined to march south against Tang. Emperor Gao Zhe sent Pei Ji against Lu's advancing army, but Pei was defeated by Lu, who then put Tai Yuan under siege. Li Yuanji fled back to Chang'e, and much of modern Shanxi was seized by Lu. Emperor Gao Zhe then sent Li Shimin against Lu, and by summer 620, Li Shimin had defeated Lu, forcing him to flee to the eastern Turks. Lu's territory was incorporated into Tang. Around the same time, however, Dao Jada the Prince of Chia made a major offensive against the cities that had submitted to Tang in modern Hebei and Henan, north of the Yellow River, seizing nearly all of them and taking Emperor Gao Zhu's cousin Li Shentong the Prince of Wuyan. Emperor Gao Zhu's sister the Princess Tong'a, and Li Shiji's father Li Gai captive. With Li Gai in Du's custody, Li Shiji surrendered to Dao as well. In 620, Li Shiji, in association with another Tang general who surrendered to Dao, Li Shanghu, plotted to ambush Dao. But the plot was discovered, Li Shanghu was killed, and Li Shiji fled back to Tang. In 620, Li Fu Vai captured much of the territory of another agrarian ruler, Li Zitong, the emperor of Wu, in the lower Yangtze River region, in the name of Tang Dynasty. Li Zitong, in turn, defeated and took over the territory of Shen Faxing the Prince of Liang, roughly modern Zhejiang. After Li Ximin defeated Lu, he started a campaign against Wang Zheng State in fall 620. He initially could not decisively defeat Zheng, but by spring 621 had put the Zheng capital Luoyang under a tight siege. Although he was not able to capture it, Wang sought aid from Dao. The latter agreed, concerned that a Tang victory over Zheng would also mean his own demise. 
but at the same time was eager to exploit the weakness of the Zheng and claim its domains for himself. Emperor Gaozhi was initially fearful that Dan Wang would be able to sandwich Li Ximin's forces between them and ordered Li Ximin to retreat. But upon Li Ximin's petition changed his mind and permitted Li Ximin to remain in the Luoyang region. Li Ximin, leaving Li Yuanji in charge of the siege of Luoyang, advanced and took up position at Huao Pass. In summer 621, the Tang and Chia forces engaged at Huao, and Li Ximin defeated Dao, capturing him. Despairing, Wang also surrendered, and most of the Zheng territory was seized by the Tang. Chia territory was also seized by Tang, but after Emperor Gaozhi executed Dao, Du's general Lu Hater rose against the Tang and seized most of the form of Chia territory, while Zhu Yuanlang, a rebel leader who had previously submitted to Zheng, also rose in revolt, occupying the modern Shandong region. Also in 621, Li Xiaogong defeated Xiao Zhi and the Emperor of Liang, who had controlled the modern Hubei, Hunan, and Guangxi region, forcing Xiao Zhi and to surrender. On another front, Li Fuvai's Lieutenant Fu Gongxi defeated Li Zitong, forcing him to surrender as well. Liang and Wu territory were seized by Tang. Meanwhile, while not noted as Emperor Gao of Han's killing of Han Xin and Peng Yu, the historians had nevertheless noted that some contributors to Emperor Gaozhu's establishment of Tang were wrongly killed by him or killed based on fairly little evidence of wrongdoing. Liu Wenjing, in 619, on accusation that he engaged sorcerers. Emperor Gaozhu's cousin de Gu Wine, in 620, on accusation of treason. Li Zhongwen, the Duke of Zhenxiang, in 620, on accusation of collaboration with Eastern Tuju. Lu Shurang, the Duke of Ying Yang, in 623, on accusation of collaboration with Eastern Tuju.